we have never been able to uh, compile an inventory of biodiversity for the Red Sea. The diversity of life in the Red Sea is too huge. And I think there's really no hope that we're going to be able to do that ever through conventional taxonomy. But in the 21st century, we are at the stage where we can actually change the mode in which we describe biodiversity from a fingerprint in the DNA. But that DNA is not present only inside the organisms. Every organism that moves around in the ocean is leaving a trace of its presence. And that is what we call environmental DNA. When we talk about eDNA, the E stands for environmental, which means that the DNA that we are targeting is found in an environmental sample like soil, water or sediment. Wow. Everyone and everything passing through an ecosystem leaves their traces and that DNA accumulates. Even if there was just a fish swimming above that specific spot, I'm going to detect that fish. EDNA allows us to assess all of the biodiversity from microbes to whales and if we see what is there, we know what to protect. The Red Sea Decade Expedition aims at producing a baseline and a full inventory of biodiversity and habitats along the whole Saudi Red Sea area. So the area to be covered is quite massive. What we're doing in the Red Sea Decade Expedition is bold, and it has not been done before. I'm not aware that any nation has tried to produce an inventory of their marine biodiversity through an approach based on environmental DNA. To be able to do that in a research vessel is even more unprecedented. One of the many advantages of eDNA is that we do not rely on the organisms actually being present at that very moment. Since we are observing wildlife, we cannot predict where they are going to be and how many are there going to be. We can also assess species that might have already left that place or we did not even know that they were there, species that had not, have not been yet discovered at this place or have gone extinct. Compared to other oceans, the Red Sea is unique. It formed quite recently, speaking in geological terms. But it's also one of the warmest and saltiest water, water bodies on this planet, which means with climate change and rising sea temperatures, we might have a bit of a model here in the Red Sea because all those species that live here adapted to salty and warmer waters and if we know what's thriving here we might find solutions for the other oceans that warm at a rate we can't control at the moment. DNA is everywhere in the environment some organisms are living in the water column in the Red Sea, so they might be living at 200 meters, 500 meters, 1,000 meters. So what we do is we use a net that is contained within an oceanographic bottle 
and then we sample a whole profile of the water column from the seafloor all the way to the surface. eDNA can be collected in various ways. Water samples are collected with Niskin bottles. Soil can be taken from the ground with sediment cores with the RV. And after that, we're going to take that sediment and extract the DNA that is inside. It is much, much easier to sequence the DNA of organisms that are present in water samples because water samples are clean, but the sediments contain a unique opportunity, which is to go back on time. Okay. And then I'm going to put it up here with the extra disc. Okay. So by uh, sequencing uh, DNA from the seafloor, not only are we able to retrieve a present-day inventory of biodiversity, but we can actually go back on time and then reconstruct uh, how biodiversity in the Red Sea was before humans started to exert uh, huge pressures on the environment. So what we're going to do now is six turns for uh, six years. It's 10 centimeters, 200 years more than yeah. so so 100, 100. This time travel ability allows us to see how the biodiversity has changed which allows us to put on models on what the changes might look like in the future. One of my biggest concerns is that we lose a lot of biodiversity here in the Red Sea before we even know it was there. Uh, oh no, no, that no. was too yeah. fast. Yeah, what are you going to do now? Uh, I, I take the sediment call. <laughs> See you guys. It's only recently that these methods can be used for ecological assessment. Since the Red Sea is quite a hotspot of biodiversity, a big part of all the DNA we will find will come out as unknown or unclassified, maybe undetected fish species or unknown microbes in the deeps of the blue crevices. And that's our next task to figure out what, like, to which animal or microbe this DNA actually belongs to. So right now is the best time to do it, because if we wait longer, we might lose biodiversity. Ultimately, when we uh, retrieve a full inventory of biodiversity end-to-end -end of the Red Sea, what we would have achieved is to characterize the genome of the Red Sea. Having that information is fundamental to be able to develop strategies for conservation that ensure that the rest is going to be for centuries a source of well-being and a resource in the world.